Hello everyone. Um, we are going to start talking about a perfectly competitive market. Uh, well, why is that? Uh, up until this point, we talked about consumer theory and uh, learned how we derive the uh, individual demand curves. Now we're going to talk about market demand. And then we also talked about uh, individual profit maximizing uh, producers and how we derive uh, their production uh, 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 supply curve. And now we're going to talk about the market supply. So in all our, our analysis, both in consumer theory and producer theory, we assume that the output that the consumers would like to buy and the producers are willing to produce. So the output price is fixed. This is what we assume. Well, however, we know that the output prices are determined in a market where buyers and sellers get together and exchange the products. So, so they trade. Well, the question is, how is the market price for each product is determined? Well, obviously that depends on many things. Uh, one of the most important factors is that the structure of the market or structure of the competition. How many firms and how many consumers are there? Probably the simplest model is the perfectly competitive market environment. And so I'm going to uh, describe the details, but the, uh, the general idea is that there are many buyers and many sellers so that each individual buyer and each individual producer or seller is a price taker. They take the price as given. However, that doesn't mean that the uh, price is, is falling uh, from the sky. Well, the price will be determined according to the aggregate market demand and aggregate market supply. Well, we'll talk about uh, the details later. Uh, well, the other important thing is uh, how we analyze the perfectly competitive market, right? Are we focusing only on one good or are we talking about uh, you know, different markets where different goods are produced. So different market means different goods. And those, there is an interaction between these, uh, these different goods. Well, I mean, why is that important? Well, I mean, you re remember, some goods are perfect complements, some goods are perfect substitutes. You know, others are some, some, somewhere in between. Meaning, you know, a demand for one particular good can actually influence the demand and or supply of the other related goods. And so the price in one market or price of one good can actually influence the price of the other good. You see what I mean? So then the question is, when we focus particularly on just one market and ignore everything else, or basically that means keep everything else fixed, uh, well, that's kind of an impartial analysis, all right? And for that reason, our first approach is partial equilibrium analysis of competitive uh, market environments. Well, what do we mean by uh, sort of, so this is the partial. Well, what is the complete market environment? Well, we analyze a market where all goods are simultaneously uh, traded between buyers and sellers. And so um, sort of a, a price of one good can influence or a sort of a demand of one good can influence uh, so supply or the demand of the other good or the price of the other good, all right? So we basically look at the entire market where all the goods are traded simultaneously. We don't keep any other goods price uh, or demand or supply fixed. Everything is endogenous. So that's going to be a complete market analysis or we're going to call it uh, general equilibrium analysis. All right, so let's focus uh, on just one particular good and, and talk about, let's talk about the details.